Hi and welcome in this new video, hope you're doing well, hope your day is great and stay for the retail project. In this video you will build a data pipeline from A to Z that extracts data from a CSV file, stores the data in BigQuery, interacts with dbt in the best possible way, you will be able to see your dbt models in Airflow. Also you will implement and run data quality checks to make sure that at each step of your data pipeline the data is correct. Finally, once the data has been extracted, loaded and transformed, you will create a dashboard with Metabase so you can explore the data. So if you're ready, let's go. My name is Mark Lamerti, Head of Customer Education at Astronomer, best-selling instructor on Udemy. And if you don't want to miss any videos about Airflow and others, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That will help me a lot. Then smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now, let's see the project diagram. Here is the data pipeline you will build. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Let's begin with the raw data. And this raw data is a data set that comes from Kaggle. And this is a transactional data set that contains all the transactions between the following dates for UK-based and registered non-store online retail. This data set is pretty easy and straightforward to use. As you can see, there are just a few columns such as the stock code, the description, the quantity, the invoice date, and so on. But the interesting part with that data set is what we will do after. Indeed, we will model the data set to obtain a fact table and dimension tables by using dbt and Airflow. Speaking of Airflow, obviously we will use it to create a task that loads the CSV file into Google Cloud Storage and you will see how to do it efficiently. Then we will run data quality checks to make sure that the raw data is correct and for that we will use Soda. If you don't know what is Soda, it is data quality framework. I love it because it is quite straightforward and easy to set up and to use as you will see later in the video. Once the checks are done, we will run another task in order to shape the raw data so we obtain the fact table and the dimension tables by using dbt and obviously Airflow. And as you will discover at this step, there is a new way to integrate dbt with Airflow, which is by using Cosmos. And I want to be clear here, you don't have to be an Astronomer customer for that, but this is truly the best way to integrate dbt with Airflow. Why? Because if you don't use this package, that means you probably are using the bash operator to execute the command dbt run, but you don't have any clues on what's going on in your dbt project. Whereas with Cosmos, all of your dbt models become tasks in your data pipeline. Again, you will see that later in the video. After we obtain the fact table and the dimension tables, we run data quality checks again. We want to make sure that the transformations are correct. And then we run other models in order to get analytics from the transformed data by using dbt. Last but not least, we run final data quality checks to make sure that the analytics are correct and if they are correct then we can build a dashboard and get insights from the data. As you can see this data pipeline is complete. You will discover how to load a CSV file into a Google Cloud storage efficiently by using the Astro SDK, how to run data quality checks in an isolated environment with Soda and the external Python operator and we will discover the decorators as well, how to run dbt models by using Cosmos and again this is truly the best integration between Airflow and dbt and much more. By the way, to follow the video, you don't have to type everything by yourself. Indeed, you will find the following link in the description below. And this is a Notion page where you will find the data set we use, the pipeline, the data modeling, and more importantly, the prerequisites and the steps we will go through in this project. But first thing first, let's make sure that you have the following prerequisites. And the first one is Docker. You have to have Docker installed on your computer as we will use it to run the Astro CLI. If you don't know what is the Astro CLI, it is truly the easiest and fastest way to set up and run Airflow locally. It is a wrapper around Docker and the Astro CLI gives you a set of commands so you can interact with your environment easily. You don't have to be an Astronomer customer, it's an open source project, so I strongly recommend you to use it. As you will discover later in the project, you will save a lot of time. Another prerequisite is to have a Soda account, which is a data quality framework that we will use in the pipeline. And for that, you go to soda.io, click on start a trial, and then ready, test, go. You will land on the following page to access your free trial. Then last but not least, as we will use Google Cloud Storage and Google BigQuery, obviously you need to have an account for that. You can go to the following link and then click on go to console. As you can see, you have $300 in free credits. So no worries, you won't be charged for that project. That being said, once you have all the prerequisites, it's time to create the data pipeline. And for that, you need to open your code editor. In my case, it is Visual Studio Code. Then in the terminal, execute the command astro dev init in order to initialize your Airflow development environment. If you are not able to execute that command, that means you didn't install the Astro CLI. 
make sure that you have the Astro CLI installed. If you don't know how to do it, go to the following link, click on the install the CLI, and then choose your operating system and follow the instructions. It's pretty straightforward, and again, the Astro CLI will help you a lot to set up and run your local Airflow environment. Back to the code editor, as you can see on the left, I have some files and folders that correspond to my Airflow project. I have the folder DAGs, where the data pipelines will be, the folder include, so I can import things that are not data pipelines in my data pipelines. I have the folder plugins if I want to customize my Airflow instance, as well as the folder test to put some tests for the tasks. Also, the file .env that can be useful to export environment variables, airflow settings to persist connections, pools, variables, and so on. The Docker file, remember that the Astro CLI is a wrapper around Docker. So as you can see, we use a Docker image, which is based on the following Docker image. No worries, behind the scene, it is Airflow. And then packages to install operating system dependencies and requirements to install Python packages. So as you can see, just in one command, I'm able to generate a fully functional Airflow project following best practices. If you want to run Airflow, you just need to execute the command astro dev start. And if you wait a little bit, you will see the following message indicating that Airflow is up and running. So if you go to your web browser and localhost 8080, you will land on that page. You type admin admin and now you have access to the Airflow UI with the DAG examples. The next step is to download the data set. So for that, go back to the Notion page, click on the following link, and at the top right corner, you can see download. Click on it, you will get a zip file named archive. Unzip this file, then in the folder include, create a new folder, data set, and put the CSV file in it. Then rename the CSV file online, underscore retail dot CSV. As you can see on the right, this CSV file has eight columns where each row corresponds to a transaction. All right, so we have the CSV file. What is the next step? Well, if we go back to our diagram, you can see that the next step is to ingest that CSV file into Google Cloud Storage. And for that, we need to complete a few steps. So the first step is to go to Google Cloud and then create a new project. You can call it Airflow Tutorial. Then click on create and make sure that you select your new project. So you should be able to see Airflow tutorial at the top. Next, click on navigation menu, then go to Google Cloud Storage and buckets. You need to create a bucket to store the CSV file. For that bucket, we can name it, let's say your first name and last name. So in my case, Mark Lomerti, underscore online, underscore retail. And again, you have everything in the Notion page in the description under the video. Click on continue, 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 and create. Okay, let's wait a little bit. And now you should have a new bucket on and retail. So once you have this new bucket, the next step is to create a service account as we want to interact with this bucket from Airflow. So go back to the navigation menu and then look for IAM and service accounts. Then create a new service account by clicking right there. Give the following name for the service account and then click on create and continue. Click on select a role, then look for Google Cloud Storage. Right there, select storage admin and add another role. And this time look for BigQuery. And again, select BigQuery admin. Then click on continue and click on done. So at this point, you have successfully created a service account that we will use from Airflow. Click on the service account, then go to keys and add a new key, create a new key, then a JSON type, click on create. And as you can see on the top right corner, you have a JSON file. This JSON file corresponds to the key so we can access the service account and so the Google Cloud services from Airflow. So once you have this JSON file, go back to your code editor. In the folder include, create a new folder, GCP, and put the JSON file in it. Rename the file service account. And now, as we want to interact with Google Cloud Services, we need to install the corresponding Airflow provider. So if you don't know what is an Airflow provider, think of it as a package that you can add on top of the Airflow core package so you can access additional services and tools. So for that, you go to requirements and you can add the following package, which is Apache Airflow providers with the following version. And again, you don't have to write it by yourself. You will find that in the Notion page. Then save the file and you need to restart the Airflow instance as we want to install a new provider. In the terminal, type astro dev restart 
and wait a little bit until Airflow is up and running again. Finally, the last step is to create a connection in Airflow that will use this service account file. So let's do that. In your Airflow UI, go to Admin, then Connections, create a new connection, name it GCP, then look for the connection type Google Cloud. And as you can see, you have a key file path to give. And to find this path that corresponds to the JSON file, you can go back to your terminal, type astro dev bash. That command gives access to the Docker container where the scheduler is running. So if you type ls, you can find the files and folders that you have right there. And if you go to include then GCP and type pwd, you have the path to use that corresponds to where the service account is stored. So back to your Airflow UI, you just passed the following path with service account JSON. Then you can click on test to verify that the connection works and you should be able to see the following message. By the way, if you are using Airflow 2.7, you might not be able to use the test button here. So to enable that button, you need to go back to your code editor, then in the on file, export the following environment variable, save the file, restart your Airflow instance, and you will be able to test the connection. All right, at this point, you have successfully configured Google Cloud Storage and you are able to interact with it from Airflow as we have this new connection. So now it's time to create the data pipeline. First thing first, remove the two DAG examples from the folder DAGs and create a new DAG called retail py. To create the data pipeline, we need to make the following import from Airflow decorators, import DAG and task. And if you don't know what are those decorators, it's the task for API. So as you know, you can create your tasks by using the Python operator and so on, but with the decorators and so the task for API, you can create those tasks faster as you will see later in the video. And also instead of using the with context DAG, we will use the DAG decorator to instantiate the DAG object. Just below, we import a datum object. This is required as we need to define the start date. And now we can use the DAG decorator that expects DAG parameters, the start date with the 1st of January, 2023. Then a schedule interval, we want to set it to known as we want to trigger this data pipeline manually and only manually, catch up to false. We don't want to rerun all past non-triggered DAG runs. And finally, we can add a tag, let's say retail. Tags are useful to categorize and filter your data pipelines on the Airflow UI. This is very, very nice when you have a lot of DAGs. Once you have the parameters set up, you can define the function just below, retail. And this is the DAG ID, the unique identifier of your data pipeline and then you call retail like that. Okay, so at this point you have created the DAG structure. Now it's time to implement the first task. And if we go back to the diagram, you can see that the first task is to ingest the data set from our local file system into Google Cloud Storage and more specifically into the bucket we've created earlier. So how to do that? Well, there are many operators you can use in Airflow and it might be hard for you to find which one. This is where the following website can be very helpful for you. If you go to registry.astronomer.io, you can search for a specific provider, DAG or operator. For example, I want to interact the local file system, I can type local and then I see all the operators that interact with the local file system. And if you carefully take a look, we have the local file system to GCS operator. That's exactly what we want. Click on it. You can see the description, the current version of the operator, as well as the parameters you can use. And even more interesting, if you click on use module, you can see the provider that you have to install to access this operator, as well as the import to make from your DAG file. As we have already installed this provider, you can just skip this line and go to the import, copy it, and back to your DAG file, paste the import like that. Now you can implement the task. So let's create a new variable upload CSV to GCS that uses the local file system to GCS operator. We need to specify a task ID, the same name as the variable upload CSV to GCS. Then we specify the source, what file we want to upload in the bucket. In this case, it is online retail that you have from the folder dataset in include and the destination in the bucket will be raw, a new folder and online retail CSV. Then we specify the bucket. You should use your bucket name. Then we use the connection ID GCP as we want to interact with Google Cloud Storage. 
and that's the connection we've created earlier. Then we can specify a main type, in this case CSV, to indicate that it is a CSV file. And that's it. Just like that, you have created your first task that uploads the CSV file into your bucket. As a best practice, I always recommend you to test the tasks that you add to your data pipeline. In this case, we want to test upload CSV to GCS, and for that, you can go to your terminal, type astro dev bash to access the Airflow CLI, and then type Airflow tasks test, then the DAG, retail, the task ID of the task you want to test, and an execution date, let's say the 1st of January 2023. If you hit enter and wait a little bit, you can see that I get this error indicating that the connection GCP doesn't exist. Well, let's verify that. So if we go back to Airflow, then go to the connection. Well, indeed, I didn't save the connection. So click on save. And now if we go back to admin and connections, you should be able to see this connection, GCP. Let's go back to the terminal, try the task again, wait a little bit. And now you see marking task as success, which means the task has been successfully executed. Let's verify that we have the CSV file in the bucket. So go back to Google Cloud Storage, then refresh the page. And we should be able to see the folder row with the CSV file online retail as expected. So congratulations, you have successfully created your first task that uploads a CSV file into a bucket. However, we are not done yet. Indeed, we want to load this CSV file as a BigQuery table. And for that, there are two tasks we need to create. So let's go back to the code editor. And the first task to implement is to create a data set in BigQuery. If you don't know what is a data set in BigQuery, think of it as a schema. So the first step is to import the BigQuery create empty data set operator, as you can see here. Then we create another variable create retail data set that uses the BigQuery create empty dataset operator. Then we define the task ID, nothing new here. Then we specify the dataset we want to create, in this case, retail. And finally, the connection to the Google Cloud services, in this case, GCP. And just like that, you have created the second task that creates a dataset in Google BigQuery. Like for upload CSV to GCS, you want to make sure that this task works. And for that, you can type Airflow tasks test, then retail, the DAG ID, and the task ID of the task you want to test with an execution date in the past, hit enter, wait a little bit, and as you can see, it works. If we go back to the web browser, then navigation menu and look for BigQuery, you can see on the left your project, click on it, and you should be able to see retail. The second task to implement is the task that it is in charge of uploading the CSV file from the bucket into a BigQuery table that will be under the retail dataset. To do that, there are many different ways, but in my opinion, the easiest and fastest way to do it is by using the Astro SDK. If you don't know what is the Astro SDK, think of it as a SDK that allows rapid and clean development of extract load transform workflows using Python and SQL. So basically, if you go to the documentation, you will see a bunch of operators that will help you to manage operations between databases and files. In our case, we want to use the load file operator. So if you click on it, you can see that this operator allows you to load data from files into your target transformation system. In our case, we want to load the file from the bucket into a BigQuery table. And the good thing is, it is as simple as what you can see here. So let's do it. As we use the Astro CLI, the Astro SDK is pre-installed. So we can just make a few imports, and the first one is obviously the Astro SDK. Then we import the object file that will be used for the input file parameter. And we import the following objects, table and metadata that will be used for the output table parameter. Then last but not least, the file type constant to indicate that the file we want to use is a CSV file. Now you have those imports, you can go at the bottom of your DAG file and create a new task, GCS to row. As you can see, we use load file from AQL and that load file operator expects a task ID, GCS to row, an input file parameter, and in this case, it takes a file object. That file object expects three parameters. The first one is the path to the file in your bucket. So make sure that you use your bucket name here and not mine then the connection ID to access your Google Cloud services, and last but not least, the type of the file, file type.csv. Now you have this object that represents the file. You can specify the second parameter, which is output table. An output table expects a table object. In this table object, you specify the name of the table you want, in that case, row invoices, and the connection ID, again, 
to create that table in BigQuery, so GCP. Then you can specify some metadata as we want to create this row invoices table under the dataset retail. Finally, the last parameter to use with load file is use native support set to false and that's it. So now you have the third task that loads the file from the following path into a BigQuery table named row invoices under the dataset retail. Let's verify that this task works. You go to your terminal, you type astro dev bash, and then you access the airflow scheduler container, and you can type airflow tasks tests, then retail the task ID of the task you want to try with an execution date in the past. Hit enter and wait a little bit. And as you can see, the task has been successfully executed. We can verify that by going back to BigQuery, refresh the page, and under retail you should be able to see raw invoices you click on it you have the schema that has been automatically inferred as you use the load file operator and you can take a look at the preview to get a snippet of your data that's why i recommend you to look at the astro sdk you will save a lot of time especially if you load transform data between different databases as you can see just a bunch of operators that will help you a lot all right, so at this point, you have successfully implemented one task to load a file from the local file system into a bucket in GCS. Then you have created another task to create a dataset, retail, and the third task, which is to load the file from the bucket into a BigQuery table, row invoices under the, under the dataset, under the dataset retail. Back to the diagram, the first step has been implemented. Now it's time to verify the raw data. And for that, we will use Soda. If you don't know what is Soda, Soda is a data quality framework that it is pretty easy and straightforward to install and to use. Basically, you create an account, then a configuration file that has the connection to the service you want to interact with, in our case, BigQuery. Then last but not least, your data quality checks in YAML. And you can take a look at that by going to the documentation and under Soda CL, which is the checks language, you can see the following examples. That's exactly what we are going to implement right now. In your code editor, open requirements as you need to install the Soda Python package, which is the following one. And again, you don't have to pause the video and write everything by yourself. You can just go to the Notion page in the link in the description below and copy and paste. Once we have the Soda core package, the next step is to create a new folder in the folder include. Let's call it Soda with a new file configuration.yaml. And that file will contain the connection to BigQuery. Again, in the Notion page, you will find the content of that file. And as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. We create a new data source, retail, of the type BigQuery, and the connection uses the service account that we've created earlier, which is in the folder GCP, with the following authentication scopes, and the project ID that you must replace with yours. So go back to BigQuery, look at your project ID, copy your project ID, and paste it there. And we want to interact with the tables under the dataset retail. And that's it. You save the file and now you need to restart your airflow instance. Why? Because we want to install the SodaCore package. So in your terminal, you can type astro dev restart. While your airflow instance is restarting, you can go to Soda, make sure that you have created an account. Again, you have a free trial and go to your account profile, then API keys and create a new API key. Let's call it Airflow, click on Create, and now copy this part, go back to your code editor, in configuration, paste the part here. By doing that, each time you run a data quality check, you will see the state of that data quality check in your Soda account. So once you have that and your Airflow instance is up and running again, you can type Astro Dev Bash, and then to verify that you are able to connect to BigQuery from Soda, type the command Soda, test connection dash d retail and include soda configuration yaml hit enter wait a little bit and you should see connection retail is valid so now you are able to connect to BigQuery from Soda, it's time to implement the data quality check. We can do something pretty basic. If you go to BigQuery, let's say we have eight columns. We want to make sure that those columns exist, the raw invoices table, and we want to make sure that the types of those columns correspond to the types that you can see here, string, string, integer, and so on. So let's do that. Back to your code editor. You can create a new folder in the folder Soda called 
checks, then another folder sources, and in that folder, create a new file, raw invoices, YAML. And the content of that file should be the following one. Let me give you a quick explanation. So with Soda, each time you want to define checks, you create a YAML file that begins with checks. Then you define the table you want to check, raw invoices. And under you have a lot of different options that again, you will find under the Soda documentation. In this case, we want to verify the schema and we want that data quality check to fail if the required columns are missing, stock code, quantity, and so on, or when one of the columns has the wrong type. So as you can see, that's the correct types. If one of the columns has, let's say for stock code, integer instead of string, that data quality check will fail. To run it, make sure that you are in the Airflow Docker container and type soda can dash d retail dash c include soda and the configuration file, then the check file, so include soda checks sources with raw invoices. Hit enter and wait a little bit and you should see all is good, no failures, no warnings, no errors. But if we modify this check, so let's say we expect that stock code is an integer, save the file and run the check again. Now we see that the check is in failure. So that's the beauty of Soda. You will be able to see whenever something is wrong with your data. Okay, so let's turn this back to string, save the file, and let's create the task in the DAG that will run this data quality check. So back to retail. After GCS to row, you create a new task that uses the external Python decorator. The external Python decorator corresponds to the external Python operator that allows you to run Python code within a pre-created Python virtual environment. This is great to avoid dependency conflicts as your task will be isolated from its environment. Imagine that you have Soda 1.2 installed on your computer, but your data quality check needs Soda 1.3 to work. Then you can create a Python virtual environment with Soda 1.3, use the external Python operator with that Python virtual environment so you can run your data quality check without impacting your machine. So let's create this Python virtual environment, go to the Docker file, and in the Docker file, you can add the following line. That creates a new Python virtual environment named Soda Venv that has the Python packages Soda Core BigQuery with the following version and Soda Core Scientific with the following version installed. Save the file, you go back to retail, and you can use that Python virtual environment with the following parameter. The external Python operator expects the Python binary where your Python virtual environment is. And that's exactly what you have right there. Under the external Python decorator, you can create a new task, check load, with the name of the scan check load. This is something that you will see on Soda and the subpath where the checks are sources. And that's exactly what we have under Soda, checks and sources. You can see the check row invoices. And then we want to import check from the following path and we want to execute the function check by using scan name and checks subpath. Then recreate the function check. So for that, go to soda, then create a new file check function dot py, and then paste the following code. Again, you will find everything you need in the Notion page in the description below. This function expects a scan name and we pass check load, a checks subpath and we pass sources but by default it is equal to known, data source equals to retail and project root equals to include. Then we import the scan object from Soda. We print the following message on the standard output. We want to find the configuration file. So it's include Soda and configuration where the connection to BigQuery is, the path to the checks, in this case include Soda and checks. And here we want to get the data quality checks under the folder sources. That's why we've defined sources right there. After that, we create a scan object, we set some configuration settings, and finally we execute the scan. We print the result of the scan, and if the result of the scan is different than zero, we return the following error. Otherwise, the data quality check succeeds. And the reason why we put this piece of code under the function check is that we will use the exact same piece of code for every task that runs data quality checks with Soda. So we don't want to type the same code again and again for every task. Finally, the last step is to restart the Airflow instance as we want to create the Python virtual environment, Soda Venv. So for that, you go to your terminal and you type astro dev restart. Make sure that you have saved all the files, retail, check function, and Docker file. 
hit enter and wait a little bit until Airflow is up and running again. Okay, Airflow is running. Let's verify that the task works. This is the best practice. In your terminal, you can type astro dev bash, then Airflow tasks test retail the task ID of the task you want to verify and an execution date in the past. Hit enter. And as you can see, it doesn't work. Why the task check load does not exist? Well, that's because we use a decorator to create that task. Whenever you use a decorator to create a task, you need to explicitly call this task in your DAG, otherwise the task doesn't exist. And you can see that if you go to the Airflow UI, then look at your DAG, you will see that only the tasks upload CSV to GCS, create retail data set and GCS to row exist and not check load. So let's do it after check load, call check load like the Python function. Save the file, refresh the page, and now you can see the new task check load. So if we run the same command again and wait a little bit, now you see it works. Congratulations, you have successfully created a task that runs data quality checks to make sure that the data you have in the BigQuery table is correct. So you have successfully implemented the data quality checks for the raw data. The next step is to run dbt models in order to transform the data and create the dimension tables and the fact table. Let's do that. If you take a look at the Notion page, you can see what we want to achieve from the raw invoices table. In this case, we want to create three dimension tables, dim product, dim customer, and dim daytime, as well as one fact table, fact invoices. The difference between fact tables and dimension tables is that a fact table contains numerical data, in this case, the invoice with the quantity and the total, and the dimension tables contain context and background information, such as the product, the customer, and the daytime. To create those tables, we will use dbt. If you don't know what is dbt, think of it as a framework to transform your data using SQL models. And if you already know dbt and you are using it with Airflow, maybe you are using the bash operator to run the command dbt run. And if you do that, you know that it is not very convenient, right? Because you have no way to know exactly what's going on with your dbt project from Airflow. And this is why there is a much better way, which is Cosmos. Cosmos is an open source framework and it is the easiest and most powerful way to integrate dbt with Airflow. So before Cosmos, that's exactly what you see with your bash operator. With Cosmos, you will get a much better overview of your dbt project. As you can see, each model becomes a task in your data pipeline. So what does that mean? It means that you have a better observability over what's going on in your dbt project. And more importantly, you can leverage Airflow features to manage your dbt projects, such as data overscaling, connections, so you don't have to use a dbt profile file to manage your connections. You can use the Airflow connections for that, retries, alerts, and much more. So at the end of the day, with Cosmos, you have a much better way to manage your dbt projects than if you are just using the bash operator. So now it's time to install dbt, Cosmos, and create those tables. Back to your code editor, the first step is to open requirements, and you can remove the Soda Core package as we install it in a pre-created Python virtual environment. So no need to install it at the Airflow instance level. And we can remove this package as well as the provider Google will be installed along with Cosmos. Then add the following two lines in your requirements file. The first one is to install Cosmos with BigQuery as we want to interact with BigQuery and protobuf for compatibility issues. Save the file and then open the file .env. Remember that you can export environment variables in your F instance by using this file. And in this case, we want to export the following environment variable. This is needed for protobuf. Then save the file and open the docker file. Now, one thing to know is that Cosmos will execute your dbt models within a Python virtual environment, and you need to create this Python virtual environment where dbt will be installed. For that, you have the following line to add to the Docker file. And exactly like before, we create a new Python virtual environment, dbt venv, and we install dbt bigquery in it. Then you save the file, and the last step is to restart your Airflow instance by typing astro dev restart. Airflow is up and running. Let's create the dbt project. For that, go to include, create a new folder dbt, and then in that folder, create a new file, profiles.yaml. Go to the Notion page, then copy the content of profiles and paste it in the file. 
Basically, a profile consists of targets and a target specifies a connection to a warehouse. In this case, BigQuery. Then we want to use the service account to connect to BigQuery. You must specify your project. So go back to BigQuery, then click on your project name and look for the ID right there and paste the ID here. Then make sure that the location is correct as well. And for the location, you can go back to BigQuery and this time click on retail and make sure that you have the same location as specified right there. Okay, so the profile is good. The next file to create is dbt underscore project.tml. In this file, you want to put the following lines. And basically that file describes your dbt project. So the name of the project is retail. We want to use the profile retail as defined in the profiles file. And we want to say that the models, by the way, a model is nothing else than a file with a SQL request to transform your data. And we want to say that any transformations will be materialized as a table in BigQuery. Okay, so once we have this dbt project, the last file to create is packages.yaml. And this time, we use that file to install dependencies, dbt dependencies, and only one, which is dbt utils, save the file and you have created your project. The next step is to create a new folder, models, in the folder dbt. And in that folder, create another one, which is sources. And in this folder, you want to create another file, which is sources.yaml. So let's create that file, sources.yml, and in the Notion page, copy the content of that file and paste it here. Again, make sure that you use the correct project ID. So go back to BigQuery, click on your project, copy your ID and paste it here, and that's it. The goal of this file is to specify the tables from which the transformations will use the data. In this case, row invoices and country. Country doesn't exist yet, so we need to create that table, and for that, you go to the Notion page, and you have this very long SQL request to copy. In BigQuery, open a new tab, paste the SQL request, and click on Run. Then just wait until the table is created, and as you can see on the left, you have a new table, country. As you can imagine, this table has a list of countries and we will use that table in the dashboard we will create later. Now we have the country table, the next step is to define the models that will generate the fact table and the dimension tables as defined right there. So let's do that. First thing first, go to your code editor and then create a new folder in the folder dbt, transform. Then in that folder, you want to define your models. And for that, you have the Notion page. So the first model to define is dim customer. So let's create a new file dim customer.sql and paste the following SQL request. Then create another file dim date time. So dim datetime.sql and paste the following SQL request. A third model which is dim product. Again, dim product. Then last but not least, the fact table, which is fact invoices. Fact invoices.sql and paste the SQL request. So just like that, you have created four SQL requests, four models that will be used to generate the dimension tables, dim customer, dim date time, dim product, and the fact table, fact invoices. I won't dive in the details of every SQL file because this video is not about SQL or dbt, but very quickly, you have the dimension customer that has two columns, customer ID and country, from row invoices, and there is a mapping made between country from row invoices and country from the table country we've created earlier. Then you have the date time dimension table that extracts the invoice date and basically gives the year, the month, the day, and so on based on that invoice date. You have the dimension product that has context around the product, such as the ID of the product, the stock code, the description and the price from raw invoices. Then last but not least, you have the fact table invoices 
that joins all of those dimension tables and gives for every invoice the quantity and the total. So now we have all of those models, it's time to run them to create the corresponding tables. To run the models, we won't use Airflow right away. Instead, we want to make sure that the models work, and for that, we can use the DBT CLI. To access the DBT CLI, we can use the Python virtual environment that we create for Cosmos. So let's do that in the terminal, type astro dev bash. And then to access the Python virtual environment, type source dbt valve bin activate. Once you are in the Python virtual environment, go to include and dbt, where your dbt project is, and type dbt depths to install the dbt dependencies, in this case, dbt utils. Once you have dbt utils, you are ready to run the models, so type dbt run profiles dir and where the profile is, so user local airflow include dbt hit enter and as you can see we have an indentation issue so let's go back to sources and make sure that you don't have any inconsistencies between the tabs and the spaces as shown right there so let's fix that save the file again run the same command wait a little bit and it looks like we made a mistake because there is no models whereas we have models and this is because the folder transform is not in the folder models so put the folder transform in the folder models, like that. So you should have in the folder models, the folder sources and another folder transform. Run the command and this time you can see four models as expected and you can see that dbt is creating those tables, dim customer, dim date time and so on under the dataset retail in BigQuery. So let's wait a little bit until it's done. The process has been successfully completed. We can verify that by going back to BigQuery and look at the tables. So let's refresh the page. And you should see on the left, under retail, four new tables, fact invoices, dim product, dim date time, and dim customer. Okay, now we are sure that the models work, it's time to integrate those models with our data pipeline by using Cosmos. And by the way, if you want to learn more about Cosmos, take a look at the documentation, you will see an example of usage and all the things you can do with this amazing framework. But now, go back to your code editor and let's create a new file in the folder dbt, cosmos underscore config.py that contains some settings that Cosmos will use to interact with our dbt models. In this case, the profile config that specifies what profile we want to use, in this case retail, and project config that specifies where the dbt project is. So once we have those configuration settings, we can go back to retail, and at the bottom of the file, create a new task, transform, which is a dbt task group that represents your dbt models in a task group where each dbt model will be a task in that group. You can specify a group ID, so the name of that group, transform, you will see that on the Airflow UI, and it expects a project config. This project config comes from the Cosmos config file. So in this case, this dbt project config, you will need to import the dbt project config object. And also, a profile config which comes from the Cosmos config file as well, this config. Then last but not least, you need to specify how you want to fetch those dbt models by using a render config object and that render config object expects two arguments. The first one is the load method, in this case dbt ls, that runs the dbt ls command behind the scene and what models you want to select, in this case we want to select only the models under the folder models and transform. So once you have that, you still need to make the imports. So at the top of the file, import dbt project config and dbt config, as well as the dbt task group that comes from Cosmos, load mode, and finally render config. So once you have that, save the file and go to the Airflow UI, click on your DAG and go to the graph view, and you can see another task transform if you click on it you will see your dbt project with your dbt models. And as you can see, you have dim product with dim product run, then dim product test, as well as dim dead time, dim customer, and finally the fact invoices table. And that's why Cosmos is so great. It gives you a full visibility over your dbt project and your dbt models, so you know exactly what's going on when you run those models. All right, at this point, we have successfully implemented the dbt models with Airflow using Cosmos. Now it's time to implement the data quality checks, checking that the data is still correct 
after the transformations. Let's do that. In the folder checks under the folder soda, create a new folder transform. Then we want to create data quality checks for the dimension table customer. So create a new file dim customer.yml that contains the following checks. Then we want to do the same for dim date time. So again, create a new file dim date time.yml and paste the following checks. Same for dim product. So copy the checks, create the file dim product. TML and paste the content of dim product like that. And finally, fact invoices. So copy the checks for fact invoices, create fact invoices.yml and paste the checks like that. I won't go into the details of those data quality checks. I've added some comments so you can know exactly what data quality check does. But basically we are verifying that the dimension tables, customer data and product, as well as the fact table invoices are what we expect they are. So now it's time to create another task in retail that runs those data quality checks. And for that, it's pretty straightforward because we've already done the work before. So copy that and paste the task here. But instead of check load, we want to rename that task with check transform and make sure that the scan name is check transform as well. And the checks subpath is obviously transform. Don't forget to explicitly call the task check transform. Otherwise, Airflow does not know that this task exists as it is a decorator. You have to do that. Save the file and now in the terminal, type astro dev bash, and let's verify that the task works by executing airflow tasks test retail, the task ID check transform, and an execution date in the past. Hit enter and wait a little bit. And after a few seconds, you should see this beautiful message all is good, no failures, no warnings, and no errors. Just like that, you have successfully implemented the data quality checks that verify if the transform data is still correct or not. All right, the last step of this data pipeline is to create three tables that will correspond to metrics derived from the dimension and the fact tables by using dbt. So let's do that. Back to your code editor. In the folder models, create a new folder, report, and create a new file in this folder report called report customer invoices dot sql you can copy and paste the following content again you will find that in the notion page create another file called report product invoices with the following sql request and finally a last one which is report year invoices dot sql with the following sql requests so if you carefully take a look at those SQL requests, you will see that they are aggregates of existing data from the dimension tables and the fact table. Now we want to integrate that with Cosmos in our data pipeline. We can just reuse this task group, paste it there, rename transform with report. Then the group ID is report as well. We use the same dbt project config and same dbt config. We just need to modify transform here by report as we want to select only the models for reporting. You save the file and now if you take a look at the Airflow UI, you can see a new task group, which is report. And if you expand it, you will see your models, report here invoices, report customer invoices, as well as report product invoices. So you see at the beginning, it was a lot of work to create those tasks and so on, but now you just need to copy and paste and change a couple of things. So the dbt models for reporting are implemented. The last step is to implement the data quality checks exactly as we did before, but this time we want to make sure that those metrics are correct before reflecting them on the dashboard. In the folder checks, create another folder report 
and you want to create one file report customer invoices .yml with the following data quality checks another file report product invoices you can see that we try to match the names between the data quality checks and the dbt models for report product invoices we want to run those data quality checks and the last one report year invoices with the following data quality check that's it you can save the file again feel free to take a look at those data quality checks they are pretty straightforward and you can see comments above each one in the data pipeline copy this task paste it there rename check transform with check report same here and now we want to fetch the data quality checks under the folder report explicitly call the task at the end of the DAG check report now if you take a look at the Airflow UI you can see that your data pipeline has a lot of tasks but with no dependencies so it's time to define those dependencies let's go back to your DAG and for that you can import the chain method at the top so let's say from airflow.models base operator import chain then at the bottom of your DAG you can use chain and then call upload csv to gcs then you want to execute create retail dataset gcs to row then check load don't forget the parentheses as it is a degraded task then transform check transform report and check report don't forget to remove check report from there as well as check transform and check load save the file go back to the airflow ui and you should be able to see the following data pipeline with the dependencies correctly defined as you can see upload csv to gcs will be executed first then create retail data set gcs to row check load transform check transform report and check report exactly as we have defined in the diagram and just like that you have successfully implemented the last step of the data pipeline that was a lot of work so congratulations you did it but let me remind you what exactly you've done so far so first thing first you have uploaded the data set with the raw data in a gcs bucket then with your data pipeline you are able to ingest the raw data from the gcs bucket into a bigquery table that it is automatically created using the astro sdk and the load file operator then you have implemented data quality checks using soda and the external python operator remember that the external python operator allows you to execute code in a python virtual environment which is nice to avoid dependency conflicts then you have created dbt models in order to generate the dimension and the fact tables by using cosmos which is truly the best way to integrate dbt with airflow then you have created some additional quality checks to verify that the transform data is correct next you have created other dbt models to generate metrics from the transform data from the dimension and the fact tables then last but not least you have implemented the last data quality checks to make sure that the metrics are correct and now it's time to create the dashboard that shows the data in action as you know we've been using the astro cli to have airflow running locally but the good thing with the astro cli is that you can add new components to your environment pretty easily how by creating a new file at the root of your project so make sure that you are at the root of your project here and this new file is a docker compose dot override yaml file behind the scene the astro cli uses a docker compose file that has all the components of airflow in it such as the scheduler the web server and so on so here you are going to override this docker compose file with the additional component you want so we want to add metabase save the file and just like that if you restart your f instance you will get a new component metabase so let's restart the f instance and now if you type astro dev ps you can see a new component metabase in fact if you go to your web brother and type localhost 3000 you will land on the following page click on let's get started select your language then put your first name last name as well as your email address 
company name, create a password, and next, you want to connect to BigQuery, DW for the display name, the project ID, again, you can find that right here. So copy the project ID and paste it here. Select the JSON file that contains your service account. So you have it in include GCP and service account. Then click on connect database, click on finish, take me to metabase and you are ready to build the dashboard. For that, click on new, then question, select DW. And as you can see, we don't have the tables corresponding to the metrics. Why? That's because we didn't run the DBT models that correspond to the table metrics. So let's go back to the terminal and here type astro dev bash, then source dbt venv bin activate, go into include dbt, type dbt depths to install the dbt dependencies, and now you can run the command dbt run dash dash select, and we want to select the models from report, the profiles dir is slash user local airflow include dbt. Hit enter, wait a little bit, report customer invoices has been created, then report product invoices has been created as well, and now the last table, report year invoices. Perfect, now it's done, we can go back to metabase, go to the settings, admin settings, databases, select DW, sync the database again, go back to metabase, click on new, question, and now you can select the tables with the metrics. So let's say we want to know the top 10 products based on the quantity sold, we can use report product invoices for that, so click on it, then visualize, click on visualization, select the pie, settings of the visualization, the dimension is stock code, and the measure is total quantity sold. Click on done, and now you can save this visualization and call it top 10 products by quantity sold. And click on save. Let's create another visualization. So new question, DW, this time we want to know the revenue per month. And for that, we can use report year invoices visualize, a line chart, go to the settings, for the x-axis the month, and for the y-axis the total revenue. So you should have something like that. Click on done, then save. This time you can name this total revenue per month, and click on save. And the last chart that we want to add is DW, and this time we want to know where are the biggest markets for products. And for that, you have report customer invoices. So click on it, visualize, and as you can see from the data, we have the countries that will be useful for the visualization we want to use, which is the map. So select the map, then in the settings, the metric field is total revenue, and the region field is ISO. And you can see the biggest markets for the products on the map, which is pretty nice. Click on save, and let's call that visualization primary markets and save. Okay, so now we have the visualizations. The last step is to create the dashboard. Click on new, dashboard. Let's call this dashboard retail, create. And now you can add your visualizations just by selecting them. So let's begin with total revenue per month. We can put it there. Then the top 10 products, let's add it here, actually let's make that smaller, and finally the primary markets, like that, and we can save the dashboard. And that's it, you have successfully created the dashboard. As you can see, you are able to get metrics about your data by using the tables that you have generated automatically by using dbt and Airflow. Speaking of Airflow, the last step that we can do is actually to go back to BigQuery and remove all the 
all the tables, all the tables and the data set we've created before. So click on delete and delete. Then go back to the Airflow UI and trigger the data pipeline to see if it works. So click on it, trigger DAG. And let's wait a little bit. As you can see, there is an error with GCS2 row. If you click on it and go to the logs, this is related to a Unicode decode error. And to fix that, it's pretty simple. You go back to your code editor and then go to online retail CSV, click on it. And at the bottom of Visual Studio Code, you can see UTF-8. Click on that, then click on save with encoding and select UTF-8. Now save the file and rerun the DAG again. So let's do it, clear existing tasks. And after a few seconds, you will see another error related to dim customer as this dimension table needs the country table to work. So go back to BigQuery and execute the following request. Again, you can find it in the Notion page. And now that the table exists in retail, you can rerun the task group by clicking on it and click on clear tasks and downstream. Click on clear. And after a minute, you will see that all the tasks have been successfully completed. So congratulations, this is it. It's the end of the video. You've learned so much. Now you know how to run data quality checks with Soda and Airflow, how to integrate DBT with Cosmos in Airflow, which is truly the best way to integrate DBT, how to manage data using the Astro SDK, which is pretty powerful, as you saw with the load file operator, and also how to run code using Python virtual environments and the external Python operator. So I hope you enjoyed that video. That was a lot, but you did it. Congratulations. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I see you for another one. Take care.